Hello, I'm back again with another installment of Psych 208 video lectures. This one is on chapter eight, correlations. And so we will get right to it um, by sharing the screen here. Okay, so we are covering correlation, correlational research designs in this chapter. Um, and so what a correlation is, is the relationship between two variables. When one changes, that makes the other change or the, the other does change anyway. Doesn't necessarily mean cause and effect, we'll get to that. All right, objectives. We're gonna understand the difference between correlational research and experimental research is the first thing we do. And then we'll explain the problems, uh, concluding cause and effect from correlational research. We'll talk about the Pearson R, different types of correlations and how correlation is displayed graphically. And then we'll talk about a couple of statistical tests, the chi-square and multiple regression. So objective one, I'm just going to cover in the lecture. I think it helps you to understand correlation better um, if we can go back to some of those basic research designs we talked about in the beginning of class. The basic researcher designs are experimental and correlational and descriptive. I don't have descriptive on here, um, but the, I'm gonna talk about the difference between experimental and correlational. In an experiment, we manipulate a variable and then we hold all other variables constant and then observe the response. Now that is used in order to determine whether one variable causes another. In a correlation, all we do is measure two variables as they occur naturally, two or more. And that is used to see if one variable predicts the other. If, if from one variable, we can guess what the other one is. And so let's get into um, some examples here. Um, again, the experiment is going to manipulate a variable and a correlation does not manipulate a variable. So let's say that I have a hypothesis that says the job satisfaction is related to salary. In an experiment, I would manipulate a, the variable of job set, or excuse me, of salary. And so I would have people at different salary rates. One group of people at a low salary, one group of people at a medium salary, one group of people at a high salary, and then test their job satisfaction. And presumably I would randomly assign people to those different salary levels. In a correlational study, all I would do was measure people's salary, what they already make in a job um, naturally occurring, and then I would study their satisfaction. So let's take a look at the different kinds of data we get. Here I had uh, the experimental study. I had a group that were paid $9 an hour, a group that was paid $12 an hour, and a group that was paid $15 an hour. And there you can see that um, I don't, I, I just have that information from that group, that group, and that group. There's no, nobody in between because I have assigned them to different groups. You can see a clear relationship there where, um, as salary goes up, so does job satisfaction. Now, because this is an experimental study, what we can do is conclude that salary, the amount of pay per hour, actually increases job satisfaction. There is a cause and effect relationship there. In my correlational study, you can see that I had people that had all different salaries. Um, or all different amounts of pay per hour, all the way up from $5 an hour, all the way up to $16 an hour. And there we see a, a relationship there as well. Um, but at the, because this is a correlational study, we cannot conclude cause and effect. We did not assign people to these salaries they were already making these salaries. So the jobs you can imagine that pay $5 an hour are a totally different job than the job that pays $16 an hour. So it may be that their salaries uh, are, are not determining their satisfaction here. It could be the job type that's determining the satisfaction. So we're gonna go a little bit further into explaining the problems with concluding cause and effect from correlational research. Sorry. Uh, okay, phone. Uh, 
explain those problems with concluding cause and effect. Um, we cannot conclude cause and effect from correlational research, and I'm sure you have heard that before. We're going to talk about some reasons why we can't conclude cause and effect. So let's go back to this example of job satisfaction and pay. And let's go just go out. All we're doing is correlational research. We just measure how much satisfaction and we measure how much pay that people get and then we draw a, a, a comparison between those and we find out that as people are more satisfied with their jobs their pay is also tends to be higher but of course those jobs are different at the low end and at the high end of pay um, there is a third variable um, uh, problem there that could be responsible for the relationship for example the pay, uh, the pay also varies with the type of job. So the type of job would be a third variable. It may be people that are working at the very lowest levels of pay at $5 an hour, maybe, um, for example, farm workers, undocumented farm workers, they don't have job, high job satisfaction, not because of the pay per se, but because of job security, immigration issues, and things like that. At the highest level, people may have greater job satisfaction because they're not having to do manual labor and things like that. So that's a third variable. Another problem is the direction of cause and effect problem. We can't be sure whether one variable occurred before the other variable or whether causality maybe goes in, in both directions. So let me go back to the example on job satisfaction and pay. We assume that the amount of money causes people to be more satisfied. So if you get paid more, that causes you to be more satisfied. But in fact, it may be that job satisfaction is determines pay. So let's say that a person who's very satisfied and very happy in their job may be more likely to get promotions. And in that sense, we have the opposite direction of cause and effect. So does job satisfaction cause a pay increase or does a pay uh, increase cause job satisfaction? We don't know, or it could go in both directions. So those are the main reasons why we cannot conclude cause and effect from correlational studies. Nonetheless, people do it all the time. So we see this, this headline, study of states showing that raising a drinking age reduces facial, fatal crashes. Well, what they did is they, uh, as the drinking age went up in different states, um, they measured that and they measured the number of fatal crashes. But what they didn't do is do it in an experimental way. It was done in a correlational way, but yet they're acting as though and the drinking age is going to determine the crashes. And the crashes, of course, may be determined by many other things, road conditions and things like that. Here's another example of why correlation is not causation. Whoa, uh, that is the that rates of violent crime and murder are correlated with ice cream sales. Well, you, what you're not going to think that ice cream is causing people to murder people. Um, that is just not happening. But what's happening, there is the third variable, which is summertime, people are out, they're more likely to commit murders, and they're also more likely to eat ice cream. Same here, we've got eat chocolate, get smart. This shows chocolate consumption, and it shows uh, uh, the Nobel laureates in these populations. Well, in Switzerland, they're eating a lot of chocolate, and they've got a lot of Nobel laureates. Does that mean that chocolate causes you to be smart? Of course not. There are many, many differences between these countries besides the eating of chocolate that could cause that difference. So we'll go on to objective three in the next video. Thank you for listening and have a great day.